Modifying a 5 inch gauge Great Western Railway 14XX steam locomotive. This is part 22, and this episode is called Coal Firing the Engine on the Picnic Table in the Garden with my friend Jonathan. And without taking a breath, please note this is not a King Scale or Silvercrest model locomotive, this engine was bought directly from the manufacturer in China. The absolute first job is to fill the displacement lubricator, and this is fitted just inside one of the side tank fillers. It feels very weird pumping oil into what looks like the water tank, but it isn't. The front part of this tank is just a void and it contains a large displacement lubricator. And the part of the tank just behind the displacement lubricator is a water tank like the other side and there's a balancing pipe underneath. In this clip I'm refitting the cap of the displacement lubricator using a coin. And the cap doesn't need to be too tight because it's fitted with an o-ring. Underneath the displacement lubricator is a valve to let the water out, and I opened this valve earlier and not much water came out at all. But then again, I haven't really steamed this engine very much. But today will be the exception, I will be steaming the engine for quite a while, at least a couple of hours. So I'm making sure that all the moving parts on the engine have a good liberal coating of oil. And as always, I'm using my own brand of lubricating oil. This is 1000 grade steam oil, 50% then 25% machine oil and 25% rapeseed oil and the resultant mixture is a very good general purpose lubricant for moving parts on steam engines. But to fill the displacement lubricator I'm using standard 1000 grade steam oil with no additives whatsoever. This small locomotive has a proper superheater that goes all the way back through a tube in the boiler and into the fire so the steam that hits the cylinders is very hot indeed and I don't want to risk any carbonisation by mixing other oils in with the lubricant that would be normally used, which is 1000 grade steam cylinder oil. In the same way as in the video I made the other week about steaming a locomotive at the Wakefield Club track, the principle for lighting the fire is almost identical, except I'm using charcoal soaked in paraffin, and I shoveled quite a bit of this into the firebox, so now it's time to light some of it on the shovel and add that to the mixture. And as soon as a shovel full of fire goes into the firebox, my lovely assistant Jonathan connects up the 12 volt battery to power the blower. This blower is one that I bought off eBay a few years ago. Quite a lot of ex Ministry of Defence blowers came on the market, and I think if I remember rightly, they were aircraft windscreen demister blowers. One problem is these are 24 volt motors, so on a 12 volt battery they don't go really fast. But even on 12 volts, it produces a really nice gentle blast and it's more than adequate to draw the fire. In this clip, I'm adding a couple of final shovelfuls of coal before closing the firehole door and letting the blower do its thing. It's no good leaving the firehole door open because all the blower does is sucks the air in through the firehole door. I need the blower to pull the air in from underneath through the fire. That way, the fire will burn very brightly. Currently, the boiler is approximately half full. I'm using the hand pump to pump a little bit more water into the boiler, but like an idiot, I forgot to close the bypass valve. So here I am pumping the handle and watching the gauge glass and thinking, the water's not going up the gauge glass, what's going on? Then I closed the bypass valve, and then of course, the water started to go up the gauge glass. The blower's a bit wonky in this chimney, I'm going to have to make an adapter, but it will suffice for the moment. As you can see here, the gauge glass is just over half full, and the water will rise in the gauge glass as it gets warm because it will expand. So I didn't want to put too much in. And now it's time to put some more coal on the fire because the fire is looking very healthy. At this stage of the process, if the fire is completely dark with not a glimmer showing, then possibly it's gone out. But this is not the case. The fire inside there is very healthy indeed. This small coal shovel that came with the engine is entirely unsuitable for firing this engine. For two reasons, it's too long, and the other reason, it's square instead of round. If the shovel was more like one of those sweet dispensers from many years ago, which is made out of a piece of tube, that would be much better because it would fit into the firehole door and allow much more coal to be on the shovel itself. But as you can see in this clip, despite the shovel, everything's looking good, and that was Jonathan, my lovely assistant, rushing into the shot to remove the blower from the chimney. And I've now opened the steam blower, and in no time at all, it's blowing off, I can't believe it. And mad as it sounds, I'm putting more coal on the fire and leaving the firehole door open in an attempt to stop the safety valve from blowing off, but all to no avail. 
In this clip you can see how difficult it is to fire this engine with a large square shovel. I'm going to make a round one and I'll probably show how to make that in a separate video. I'm dropping quite a lot of coal on the foot plate but this is not a problem. I can pick that up later and feed it in by hand. And that's why I removed all the water and steam piping from inside the cab. So any pieces of coal falling onto the cab floor can be easily retrieved and fed back into the firebox. I set the pressure gauge in the end to 100 pounds per square inch, which is what the boiler is supposed to run at. And the good news is, the safety valve is more than adequate for venting the excess steam. It's impossible to make the engine make pressure against the safety valve, and the gauge remains at 100 pounds per square inch. I think the time has come to stop messing about and open the regulator. I've opened the drain cock, that's why there's a lot of steam at the front of the engine low down, and there is some water coming out of the chimney, but it's not much at all. Now I'm shutting the drain cock and running the engine. I'm going to stop talking and let you listen to it for a while. First in slow motion. The water level started to get a bit low, so it's time to test the injectors. I've already done this on gas, so I know that they work. I'm going to use the right hand injector, which is the one I've tested the least. And it's straight in. Open the water valve, let some water run, open the steam valve, and water gets pumped into the boiler. And as you can see, the water gauge is still at the same level as it was before I started running the engine. It's worth remembering, of course, that this engine is not running under load. When a steam engine is working hard and pulling weight, the blast up the chimney really draws the fire. But this is steaming very well with hardly any load at all. And most unusually, with the firehole door open and me shoveling lots of coal in, the pressure is hardly dropping at all. This is a very good steam locomotive, I'm very impressed with this. It may be that because all the tubes are very clean, the heat exchange is very good. I'm sure after a while the performance will drop off because it usually does as the flue tubes get dirty and need cleaning. With a completely black fire with not a trace of orange in the fire itself, the engine's pressure does drop a little bit, but in no time at all the fire comes back to this. What a great looking fire. Because this is a new boiler there's some priming going on inside. Priming is where the water is a little bit unstable and gets lifted with the steam. And you can see this in the gauge glass, the water's going up and down like a yo-yo. And when the safety valve blows off, it often pulls water up with it. After a while, when the boiler's been blown down a few times, the water inside the boiler gets much cleaner. But it really does take two or three really good steaming sessions before the priming stops. And also, usually, the safety valve settle down a bit too. So I don't think I want to be in any big hurry to make a new safety valve for the engine, I'll give it a chance to settle down first. One viewer said, why is the engine making a knocking or tapping sound? Well, it's because of this. There's a chunk out of the edge of the bearing. The rolling road arrived like this, it's nothing I've done, but I didn't feel like complaining about it because it's not a massive issue. And I quite like the clickety-clack noise that it makes. It's a bit reminiscent of the sound made by a locomotive wheel when it hits the gap in the rail joints. So to sum up, what do I think about Chinese locomotives? Well, I think this one is really excellent. But as I received it, I didn't think it was so good. Since I've improved the plumbing, improved the turret, and the quality of the fittings, oh yes, and the coupling rod retainers, and the main suspension, and the rear suspension, and cut away the top of the running boards, which go underneath the boiler to stop it from fouling the big end, etc 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 quite a lot of work if you've been watching the series you'll see what i've been doing to it but now is it worth it yes it's a great engine so all i can say really is if you buy a chinese engine like this you may be lucky and it could be perfect in the fullness of time they will get better but for the moment i would consider it to be a pre-assembled kit of parts it really is a lovely engine i'm actually going to run this on a track i wasn't going to bother 
but I fancy a bit of a hurtle around the track. So I'll video that when I come to do it. And that's it for now. I'm going to stop talking and just leave the engine to play out the video. So that's really about it for this series and I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you're going to buy one of these locomotives, thanks for watching and I hope you will find this very useful. Yes.